The ocean covers 70% of the Earth's surface and provides food to over 2 billion people across the globe. However, the ocean's bounty in recent years has come under attack due to overfishing. Studies have shown a massive decline in world fish stocks over the past 50 years, with at least 51 marine species known to be extinct, largely due to commercial fishing. Aquaculture is one promising solution to this pressing issue. However, there are some major problems with traditional aquaculture. Often large areas of land such as ecologically essential mangroves are dredged and destroyed to create aquaculture facilities. The Cape Eleuthera Institute in Eleuthera, Bahamas has an aquaculture system of its own and is taking major strides in solving many of the issues that traditional aquaculture currently faces. I felt like aquaculture was a place that all the disciplines come together. You know, you gotta look at the economics, you gotta look at the biology, you gotta look at the environment. Because there's no doubt that, you know, the world needs to be fed and that uh, aquaculture is already becoming one of the ways, farming the seas, blue revolution, is one of the ways that we're, we're feeding people. Uh, the challenge is that, just like in the beginning of the green revolution and continue today, it's not so sustainable. And what I've been trying to focus on um, is how to create an aquaculture program that's demonstrating with other partners how we can, how we can grow food and, and grow food in the ocean and do it in a way that's not um, impacting the environment. Conducting a variety of studies the Wedge Center for Sustainable Fisheries at CEI is working towards solving these major environmental issues with traditional aquaculture. Um, we have the largest solar array in the Caribbean that powers our seawater pump and wet lab facility. We have one broodstock tank with a recirculating system. It means the water that goes in, it kind of gets recirculated. It's actually a partial recirculating system. Some water, some water does leave the system and then extra water is added just so it's a complete flow. Um, right now we're raising cobia and that's what we've raised since the aquaculture program got started. Cobia grow really quickly. They reach market size, which is between five and 10 pounds within a year and they have a really good food conversion ratio, which is how much food they eat to how much they grow. Um, Kobe is, is about 1.6, so they eat 1.6 grams of feed and they grow a gram. Um, we have seven grow out tanks where we hold our fish before they're moved to the offshore cage, and then we have six smaller tanks that are filtered with UV, um, and that's typically where we do our larval rearings. So our wet lab is set up so that all of the water that flows through the tanks, and this isn't just for the cobia, this is for any other fish that are held in our saltwater tanks that are, that's in the system over there. Um, all of that water with the fish waste included get, flows into our mangrove system that's in between the Island School and CEI campuses. And what that does is the mangroves take up the nutrients from the fish waste, which is, um, the majority is nitrogen and phosphorus, and the mangroves take up those nutrients so that there isn't an excess in the water once it reaches the ocean. Um, we've actually done tests, and the water entering the wet lab is the same quality as the water that leaves the mangroves. Once the cobia reach an appropriate size, they are moved to an offshore cage. The, the open ocean cage is a massive system, again, from, from relative terms. Um, it, it is designed to be a commercially viable system. And when you think of the dimensions of it, it's basically a 45 foot spar that, that is the center of the system. And the way I like to think of it is like a bicycle wheel where you take the hub and you stretch it out 45 feet and then the wheel of the, of the, the rim of the bicycle is 100 feet across. And then the netting goes from that 
you know, whatever that is, 20 to 25 feet above the, the rim down to create this kind of biconical shape. So I, I like to think of it as like a flying saucer. So I think the volume is 3,000 cubic meters. So that's, that's a big system. And I think in other places in the world where it's deployed, I mean, they're, they're growing tens of thousands of fish in just one cage. Uh, I think one of the reasons why it's successful is it's designed to be able to withstand hurricanes. That thing's been out there for some big hurricanes. And the way it's anchored and the way it's um, designed, it kind of rocks with the waves and it's submerged. It's 25 feet below the surface. So it's able to kind of roll with the heavy seas, whereas you know, traditional aquaculture and pens would just get wiped out. We have grown two cycles of cobia out of the cage, and both of those cycles were actually compromised by sharks um, creating holes in the netting out at the cage. So we've never actually done a complete harvest. We've never harvested um, the full amount of fish that we've stocked out at the cage. I'm hoping that when we stock the fish later this month, that will be the first grow out that we actually get, you know, a full or close to, you know, 100% grow out out of the cage. Feeding this large amount of an operation, however, often requires using fish feed with more fish biomass than the farmed fish produce. The Cape Beluther Institute is currently conducting experiments to solve this problem. We actually are comparing two different types of fish feed. One is a typical commercial feed that has a higher amount of wild fish protein and the other is an experimental feed designed specifically for cobia that has a lowered um, amount of fish protein in it and it's also supplemented with soy and other types of protein. And we are doing an experiment where we feed a certain amount of fish one of the feeds and then a certain amount of fish the other feeds and then we monitor their growth to see how each of how, how the fish develop on each of those feeds. Aquaponics is another form of aquaculture practiced at the Cape Luther Institute, which produces fish and lettuce. Uh, aquaponics is a recirculating aquaculture system. Um, basically, the way it works here is you start with the fish tanks as the highest point in the system. Um, obviously, you have to give the fish feed. Um, so that they grow and you're trying to raise the fish so that we can eat them in our dining hall. Um, and the fish produce some byproducts as a result of giving them food, mainly solid waste and dissolved nutrients that are then in the water system. And so the water flows from the tanks that the fish are in to a series of physical filters that remove the solid waste material, uh, which we then ferment in an oxygen-rich environment um, for about a month so that we can then apply it as a fertilizer to our terrestrial plants. Um, we are a model system for what can be done in a region such as this. So we use plants and fish that are specific um, to this climate and this region and um, the economics here. There are many places around the world like CEI that are working to correct the problems with traditional aquaculture. And although not yet perfect, aquaculture has the potential to sustainably provide food to people around the world while helping to conserve global marine resources.